Uh, first thing this weekend, I think it's uh, it's a great honor. You know, the, the coach Johnson's coming back and, and to be able to have coach here. Uh, you, know, to, you know, honor him on his Hall of Fame induction and <clears throat> to have him here for the for the game. Uh, to, to be able to honor him, you know, really appreciative of everything he's done here, uh, everything he did here as, as the head football coach and, and the, the the pride that he has in, in having been the coach here. Uh, just very fortunate to have him come back. Uh, very fortunate to have him, him be someone that uh, to talk to and, 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 and be around. So, again, just, you know, credit to what he did here as the head coach. Uh, the success he had, the players he developed on the field, the players he developed in the classroom that are now going on. And at this point now, I think, well, gosh, what's it been since he it was first year as a coach? I mean, you know, 13, 14, 15 years along there. I mean, some of those guys that have graduated underneath him have now to the point in their careers where they're going on and becoming very successful in their own rights. Uh, you know, and so just a credit to that and the program you run when, when you see that. And I know that's, that's always really cool to come back and as a coach and see your former players and whatnot and the things they've done. So just <clears throat> excited to have him back around uh, for the game on Saturday. Uh, excuse me. You know, good game coming up this Saturday. We're excited to play. Uh, you know, you know, challenging opponent. Uh, very good opponent. Opponent. You know, Coach Brown's done a, a, a great job there. Uh, you know, two years in a row now. Teams that are. <clears throat> Uh, you know, really quarterback driven uh, in what they do. Uh, you know, Drake is a heck of a quarterback, uh, but I think the, the the thing they've done this year, they're you know different play caller on offense. You know, Chip does uh, is a different uh, form of form and style of offense, but it's still the same in, in the aspect that it's, it's you know it, it all goes through the the quarterback. And uh, <clears throat> then defensively, you know, that, that's where I think they've made a lot of improvements. They really have. They've a lot of the same players are back. Uh, you know, they've got experience, <clears throat> but you know, they're, they're playing faster. They're playing like a group of uh, experienced guys out there together. You know, with their, you know, with, with consecutive years under the same uh, coordinator. So, <clears throat> you know, look forward to the challenge. You know, look forward to a good football game. And, and you know, coaches, players, all of us. You know, make sure we're we'll have to make sure we're 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 on top of everything. And uh, I think we've had a good week of practice leading up to it. So excited for the challenge. Excited to uh, go play on uh, on Saturday night. On, and you know, I think the ACC networks here uh, tomorrow through the whole weekend. You know, so it's it's a big it's a big thing, big atmosphere, and, and you know, get a good atmosphere <clears throat> to go play in, but also a big atmosphere uh, to surround to surround the game. So excited for it, and with that open with any questions. Questions. I had some hot chicken, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> It was hot. I'm like sweating in my mouth. It's still going. <laughs> Carolina has two of the better receivers in the league. Uh, it's probably asking a lot to stop them, but I imagine you just want to limit the big plays from those guys. Well, yeah. I mean, I think with any of them, you want to stop them. You want to, you want to be able to, uh, you know, stop what they do. You know, stop how they do it. Stop some of the. Uh, you know the bigger plays that they have, and that's that's the name of, the def of defense is to try to uh, play the plays within your scheme <clears throat> the best. So uh, you know they've uh, they do they've got some good players, they've got two good receivers. You know really more than that, they've got several receivers that are productive for them. Uh, you know good running backs, and then you know obviously like I said the quarterback. So but but when you come back to explosives, that's what you want to do. You want to be able to you know to limit explosive plays. It, it, and limit uh, situational plays that, that keep you on the field. And that, that's what we've uh, stressed a lot this week, worked on a lot this week. You know, We've got to be able to uh, – the, the plays that are explosive and, and lead to points, but also those plays that extend drives. So, uh, yeah. okay. What have you guys talked about this week in terms of getting maybe the passing game back on track like it was early in the season? Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think personnel driven will help. Uh, I think that – you know, get, getting guys, getting guys back, getting guys healthy. Uh, you know, back out there playing full speed. You know, that, that's a big thing that'll help. Uh, it helps the timing in the passing game. Helps the confidence in the in the passing game. Helps the protection. Help helps things all around. Uh, but then, <clears throat> you know, I think I said it on Tuesday. The thing we've got to do is be able to, you know, get an efficient running game going. That's the thing that really in the last uh, several weeks has. You know, there's been, you know, big. There's been some big yardage numbers overall. But again, a lot of that was driven by the quarterback and the quarterback, whether a design quarterback run or a quarterback scramble. So uh, to be able to alleviate uh, the, the pressure that, that's coming right now 
on that. We, we've got to be able to you know, be able to be balanced in what we do on offense. You know, help out in the run game. You know, I think because one with one goes the other. Uh, you know, all of a sudden you put all the pressure on one person to make the plays, and, and, and that, that's that's not the recipe that, that we want to have here, and it's not the it's not a recipe for success at all. So we've got to get more balanced in what we do, and it's not the balance of the play call; it's the, it's the balance of the efficiency of what's taking place. The guy you're honoring, I think, once ran the same play 15 straight times because no one stopped it. And um, when you talk about the red game, it seems like was it the same play, <clears throat> or did the read change and it came possibly three different people running the same play for? 15 no, it was pretty times. much just, it just ran the dive like um, 15 straight times on one drive, I think it was, and just. You know, you guys are running the ball well and then get away from it a couple different times in the game. And, yeah. and I know watching Buster's offense, like at other places stuff, it's more balanced. I imagine that's a little frustrating when you go back and look at it and see that those opportunities. Is that something you have to maybe even, like, get on the headset and be like, hey, you know, we're doing this. Like, well, let's get back to that. Is that maybe where you have to interject a little bit as a head coach? Yeah, we did some last week. You know, that, that was those were some things that – uh, we're, we're interjected in the things we, we, we went through, some of the adjustments that we made. Uh, you know, the, the same thing goes really every week. Uh, but it comes back to also, you know, we, we've got to be able to execute those plays when, when, when they're called. Because uh, then <clears throat> what you don't want to have to do is totally, you know, remake a game plan at halftime. You know, you don't want to totally revamp what you're doing. I mean, that's why you have practice during the week is to, you know, to, to practice the, the plays and the motion shifts and, and to, to form repetition versus that defense. So, you know, th but there's other ways to do things too, Kelly, they're, you know, they're, as far as running the same play, like you just said, but, uh, you know, different, a different shift, a different motion, right? You know, a different way to affect support, right? You know, it, take, take what they're doing and, and what, 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 what do we, what can we do now that complements what we were doing, but now you go back to it and uh, it's something, you know, a little bit different. So those are all things that, that we've worked on uh, and, and work to implement now uh, moving forward. <clears throat> Avery Boyd is, is a guy that's taken advantage of, you know, with some of the injuries and, uh, he's made the most of his opportunities with, when he was targeted. Uh, has he continued to practice well enough that we could see more of him as we move forward? Yeah, you'll see a lot, a lot of Avery, you know, regardless of who's uh, back healthy, not healthy, uh, not ready to play, can play. Uh, Avery, Avery will be on the field a lot. Chad? We spoke with Kyle Eford yesterday. Seems like he's got a really bright future. What are your expectations for him? Yeah, <clears throat> well, as a player, number one, to continue to improve. Uh, uh, but the thing that Kyle brings that I think is really, really big right now on that, that side of the football is, is he, he brings some leadership. You know, he's a younger guy, but I spoke to him last week at one point and, and just about the leadership that he brings. And it's it's the two-way leadership that you want and that you need. It's the, you know, doing it by doing what you're supposed to do, uh, the leading by example, by the way you play and the way you carry yourself. But it's also... Uh, the, the respect that he that, that, that he has, it's the, uh, the the way he carries himself, the confidence he carries himself with, but not a not an arrogance at all. Uh, and and when he speaks up, people listen because he's backed it up now on the field. And you know his, his knowledge of the game that's improved so much. Uh, you know, in, in just with playing, you know, with, over the last you know five six weeks, you know, he is he's become quicker to the ball. You know, he's quicker in coverage. And that, you know, he didn't change what his 40 is. I mean, this time of the season, usually you're, you're losing, you know, you're losing steps uh, on, on your, on your uh, true speed. But his anticipation and knowledge of uh, what, what's going to happen and tendencies and those things are what's allowing him to play uh, good football. Watching back some, you know, some of the last, the games where you guys have struggled, it seems like there's times where guys are not locked in, maybe not. <clears throat> You know, whether Tane's not stepping into throws or a receiver being lazy on a route or, like, is that frustrating to see? I know you talk about mental toughness yeah. and, and, and that's what you want this program to be and to see just, you know, one guy not doing their job at 100% can impact an entire play, lead to a turnover or, you know, a three and out or whatever on offense or defense, vice versa, a guy and getting washed out on motion or something like that and being in the wrong spot. They gave up one of the long runs on Saturday. Yeah. Um just how do you address that with the team? Like just not being 100% locked in all the time. And, and, and there's there's the locked in part. You know, it's, 
it's like I've said before too, these are the same things that are addressed after wins that, that, that you go into. Uh, people sometimes choose not to hear them as much after you win a game. All right? they, they, they tend to think that you're you know, focusing on the negative and not the positive. And I mean, your job as coaches is to coach up what's not, not good but, and, and have the expectation to be what is good. But yeah, you, you, you show them the things that are right, you show them the things that are wrong. And, it, and they obviously become magnified when that ball comes to you or the, you know, that becomes your block or that becomes you know, your fit in the run game. Whereas, you know, there might have been, you know, plays prior to that where the same thing took place, someone else, and you know, didn't get caught in the, in the, in the, you know, point of attack. All right. So, it goes back to really identifying those things in practice, and you know, when mistakes happen in practice, it's not just on to the next play. Right? You know, when a, when a loaf takes place in practice, it's not just hey, on to the next play. You know, and let it continue to occur. Uh, Practice-wise, there's there's you know pursuit drills and takeoff drills and you know uh, perfect play perfect play scenarios, <clears throat> good on good where you're you know, you're forcing these guys and, and that, that's the beauty of playing with tempo too is you know, when you play with tempo and really offensively it doesn't allow you to stop and slow down and have to think whether you over process whether you you know you lose focus that tempo you play with allows you to continue to uh, you know stay focused on because you're going fast. Right? And, and that's one of the things that, that I like about tempo and playing with tempo it, is it, it forces guys to do that. So, uh, but those are things that you, you call them out. Uh, you have their peers call them out and, you know, and talk through them. And then you know, you know, hopefully you get to the point where you know, those continue to happen. You, you don't, the, the guys don't play. Right? You, you replace those guys. And you know, that's, that's where you want to get is where you, you don't have you know, one player having to play at you know, in, in, in a position that normally you would rotate guys in Right, and having to play 65, 70 plays in a game like that, where through the first, second quarter, you know, third quarter, they're, they're, they're playing good football. And now you get to that fourth quarter, and now you do lose focus. Now you do lose stamina. Now you do lose energy. Right? Well, you've played a lot of those before, all those plays before. You, 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 you need to, you know, say you average 40 plays at that position. All right? And that would be a lot. So now all of a sudden you're way over that threshold. So we've got to do a better job of rotating guys in at the right time, at different spots. Uh, you know, not putting guys in there that, that are going to continue to you know play through the whole game that you're going to need at the end of the fourth quarter. All right. So is that on you know the players losing focus? Is that on the coaching? It's a combination of everything. All right. Is it, it goes back. To, does it go back to recruiting? Yeah, it goes back to recruiting of continuing to recruit depth. So really look at the whole part. You know, the whole gamut there. You know, you, you can take all of it back to. To, to everything that you've got to really work to improve on to help those things from keep help keep those things from happening. Anything else?